bitch, because that is so fucking hot. Like, we literally, when we were planning this episode, we were, like, getting horny, and it's happening again, because are you serious? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of So Wet, So Dry. I am one of your hosts, Autumn. And I'm Fiji. And we are back at it again. We obviously, this is another remote episode. Unfortunately, that is what it's going to look like for the next couple of weeks and stuff. But we have a very interesting topic today that we are excited about. We're sipping on some seltzers. Yes, Ooh. I have the like high noon ones. They're so good. But yeah, we're just having a, you know, a grand old time. Um, and we want to start off the show how we always do, just by saying what we're so wet and so dry about um, in this current moment. Um, and I think I'm going to go first. So go you guys, I'm so wet because... Basically, if you've been, like, following along, like, I got out of, like, a pretty, like, long relationship recently, and basically, we haven't talked, and, like, I'm just wet because I still have all the sauce because he literally dropped off weed outside my apartment, like, in the bushes and was just, like, you know, there's weed outside, like, go get it, and I was, like, "Are are you outside, and he was, like, no, I left. And I was like, okay, show me proof. And I made him like send him a picture of him in the car. So I was like, I don't want to see your ass, but y'all take the weed. So are you kidding me? Like we haven't Free talked weed. or been together in so long. And he just, he's dating a new girl. He just still thinking about me, wants to drop off some weed for me. Mm-hmm. Like it just felt good. You know, it yeah. felt good. That's all I have and to that's say what about we it. Need from men, honestly, especially right. your exes. They should come delivering gifts. That's what. Right. You like, deserve. just do your fucking job. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really wet about that. The weed was like okay. It wasn't even that fire. I'll be honest. So <laughs> just kidding. But it was free. So yeah, exactly. Uh, what about you? Um, I'm so wet, honestly, because I feel like normally, you know, I usually go for tall men. Um, but I did make out with a short guy a couple weeks ago. I actually think it was like two different. It was like a short guy and then like an average height guy. But normally that's not really like my vibe. And honestly, I kind of fucked with it. So I have been, you know, discounting the short men. Maybe I need to. No, y'all. She's been literally more. ruling them out for as long as I can remember. She's like. It's it's a deal breaker. It doesn't matter if he was like a fucking millionaire hot as shit. She's like, I no, I can't care. do it. Because her Cause thing I'm tall, is, bro. yeah, I'm she's tall. tall. Like, I'm five seven, but I wear platform boots all the time. So it's like I can't like look down on you. Like I don't know. I, it was kind of funny though because one of the dudes when we were making out, he like grabbed my butt, and I feel like he had to kind of like reach up. Like I just, it's funny. Like I'm like, we can't be seen, and I can't. I don't know. Maybe that's fucked up. I guess no, I be because so, <laughs> so many girls feel that way. And it's not like you're saying, like, you know, short men suck and, like, you can't date a guy shorter than you. It's just, like, your preference. And, honestly, it's, like, most people's preference that I've right. heard. But, and yeah. And there's plenty of shorter women. Like, most women are shorter. Right. That's why it's, like, I don't worry about it. Like, they are always taller. Lucky. I'm always, like, even if you're 5'11", it's, like, a little bit, like, I need, like, Six ones and up, preferably. Yeah. I'm five four for anyone who. Fucking yeah, cares, so, so he was probably like five. I think one was like five eleven and one was like five seven. And five eleven is short to you. Well, when I wear my platform shoes, I'm definitely like pushing six foot. Hey, that's fast. So, and it's so funny because I feel like short men always are like damn, like, how tall are those shoes? Like, when you take those shoes off, we'll be the same height, though. And it's like, all right, pipe down. Right. They're always like, yeah. It's it's like, but the shoes aren't coming off. Like, this is my Mm. look. Yeah, totally. Exactly. 
But yeah, other than that, I'm pretty wet about the podcast has been doing well. We've been on our weekly cycles, YouTube, yeah. Spotify, killing it. Um, but I am dry about some hate we've gotten. Bro, people are so <laughs> annoying. Like, I started posting on YouTube shorts, um, and it's actually gotten us, like, a lot of traffic, which has been great. But we keep getting the same comment where people are like, your mic's not plugged in. You need a better mic. And you guys, we know. No. Like, are, do you think we're no. stupid? Like, we literally pass around the mic. We don't use the audio from that mic. Like, it was a prop. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we initially wanted to use the audio, but it didn't work. Like, we couldn't figure it out. The mic didn't sound right. Like, yeah. we just felt like to be a podcast, you need to be official with a mic. So it was a prop. Like, yeah, I know. And it's like, we're not proud of it, but it's like, where's your podcast, bro? Yeah, like, it's fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, at least we're doing something. But, anyways, like, or donate to the funds. Like, right. Shop us, send a donation, and it, I don't want to see another complaint about the fucking mic unless you're paying for my goddamn mic. Okay? Right. So irritating. It was like three dudes like in a row. There was like, just so you know, your mic, da, da, da. It's like, bitch, we I know. know. Like, I we fuck. Know. Anyways, so that was irritating. But I was like, okay, thanks for the comment, though. Like, you've seen the <laughs> algorithm. Love that. Yeah. And there's been like a lot of girls on TikTok that are like commenting and saying they agree with what we're saying. So it just, it means so much. And we're really, because we literally built this from the ground up. Like, no yes. one is helping us. We are doing this all by ourselves. So, like, appreciate y'all. And also, fuck you if you think our mics sound bad. I don't, literally, I don't care. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely dry as fuck about that. But at the end of the day, it boosts the algorithm, so fuck them. Exactly. Anyway. Keep it coming. That's <laughs> what you were saying. Coming. We were getting so excited about it. We were like, oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yeah. the topic for the day? Okay, yeah. Today's topic is kind of kinky, guys. So the topic for today is all about exhibitionism. And if you don't know what that is, we didn't either. We literally figured it out because we were going to do an episode about kinks, but we were like, okay, we got to narrow it down. Because we had so many, so bitch. Many. There was like, <laughs> the list goes on. Like, it was right. crazy. So we were trying to categorize because we have a lot of very different kinks too. Yeah. And when we were categorizing, we realized that the ones we had in common are fall under the umbrella of exhibitionism. And we were like, yo... We're exhibitionists. Right. So we're going to let you guys know what it is because judging off of our Instagram poll that we did, a lot of you guys are exhibitionists as well and you might yeah. know it, but it is empowering sometimes to have like labels and know what you identify as sexually in case you get into the bedroom with someone and you want to tell them what you like, whatever. So yeah, we just pulled these definitions from Google essentially, but basically... It's extravagant behavior that's intended to attract attention to oneself. Um, and it's also a compulsion to display one's intimate body parts or to behave sexually in public. Um, so, yeah, it, it's like, I mean, just off that definition, like we're going to go into it more. But we basically just want to start with like going kind of like how – exhibitionism like relates to men and women and unfortunately yeah. like we there wasn't any like research out there about like non-binary people so like I don't know but like this is like what we kind of came up with and essentially it's like this can be like an actual disorder like if you think about yeah. men in public trying to call like sexual attentions to themselves like that gives like kind of a different vibe and it's, like, that type of, like, creepiness. Like, this can be a disorder. Like, people yeah. get arrested for it. Like, Yeah, and that's what most people know exhibitionism as because there's laws against it. And right. And that's pretty much if a dude – it could be a woman, too, but we say men because the statistics that we found, it's predominantly men that are arrested for exhibitionism. And it's pretty much if they just, like, pull down their pants and show off their dick to the world. Right. Which, as a woman, I feel like, mo and if you've lived in a city, you've probably encountered that experience. I know we have, like, on the train in Boston, like, in the city. Like, it's just, there's a lot of that, and it can't, it is, like, a mental disorder. Yeah. To some degree. But 100%. people can be arrested for it. And yeah. sexual assault, it's a version of sexual assault. So that's not really what we're talking about as much. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're that. <laughs> we're that. 
that. <laughs> We're those type of bitches. But it is important within that, with the whole gender thing, women are more sexualized in society. So if a woman was to, you know, pull, maybe if she's just straight up, like, showed off her pussy, like, it'd be different. But, like, women wear more revealing clothes where you can see, like, your nipples or, like, even, like, the, the bottom of your ass or whatever, and it's normal. Right. Versus if a guy did it, it would probably be seen as more, like, sexual harassment. Yeah, and it's, like, super – it's, like, it's just, like, it's more – socially acceptable for women to like show their bodies in that type of way like it's like what people like want to see and like all that stuff so I think like when it when we are talking about like being exhibitionists and stuff like we are more saying like in a kinkier way that we are and it's also like we exactly like Fiji said like we like to wear like a see-through shirt where you can see our nipples and it's like it's not like that within itself means that you are an exhibitionist but it's like that's something it's like you feel very comfortable you and it's like it gets confusing because it's not necessarily if you wear a shirt like that you're looking for sexual attention right but some people are and that's okay like it's okay if you do want to get sexual attention like I feel like that's why it's like we have dress codes and all that bullshit because everyone thinks it's about sexual, you know, attention. Right. But a lot of women and people are like, no, I just want to wear this because it feels good. Yeah. But for me, like, yeah, I want sexual attention. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that either. So right. it's just like, but yeah, it's interesting. It's both because I feel the same. Like, I love to wear a see-through shirt because that's like a part of my body I'm the most confident in. And I talked about that on a different episode, but that was different because I was like, I posted it. And then I'm getting unwanted comments from people that are like, so it's weird. It's one of those things where in some ways it can be like a sense of like self-expression. And if maybe like the right person were to say somewhat something like, yeah, and it's like that, like wearing that shirt within itself, it's like you're allowed to like take back if you maybe when you go out one night and you wear that certain shirt with your nipples and you are looking for sexual attention, but then you post a picture later, it's the next day, you're allowed to like not want sexual attention anymore because that's not the only reason people wear revealing clothes like that. Right, and it's it's all about consent too. Yeah, it's like you can take back consent anytime you want. So if that exactly, that's why it's like that's that's different. So basically, exhibitionism. Even though we read the definition, let's break it down a little bit more. Yeah. Um, as a kink, it's pretty much it's a bunch of different qualities that we'll go into a little bit later. But it's basically the idea that you like to be perceived sexually, like you get turned on. (laughs) At the idea of someone else being turned on by you. And right. so usually you're acting in a way that tries to incite this type, t- type of attention. And so exhibitionists go very closely with voyeurs because the voyeur kink is like you like to watch. Which we so have heard of. We we've did heard know of. that I feel like was. you hear of voyeurs more. I used to think that I was because I was like I like being watched. Like I thought it just went hand in hand. But it's yeah. really like the opposite like you don't want people yeah so well yeah you don't like to be like if you think about would you ever be comfortable with watching your partner have sex with someone else or would you want to have watched well I mean anyone who watches porn is to some degree a voyeur like that's a voyeuristic right thing but more in like if you yeah if you want to sit in the bedroom and like watch other people yeah it's different if you're actually like in the room with people Personally, no. Yeah, no, no. I don't want that. That's but not hot. It, it could be with like mutual masturbation and that's like exhibition. I love that. And that, yeah, that's definitely more of a thing. So like exhibitionists usually pair well with voyeurs, but exhibitionists can also pair well with other exhibitionists if you're doing things like mutual masturbation or, Ugh, you know, you like to have so sex. So hot, that. bro. Yeah. Y'all <laughs> need to get on mutual masturbation. If you have never done that before, like, Very it is hot. just, I, I've i never, I don't think I've done it with a guy. I don't, it doesn't really turn me on to see them. No, like, I'm like, I mean, I like, like, FaceTime sex. Like, Okay, that's like, yeah, that's different. 
But I, it doesn't, like, when a girl's, like, playing with her pussy, like, that's really hot. But when a guy's, like, playing with his dick, like, he just looks stupid. Like, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I'm just, like, anti-men right now. I feel like if it's someone that you're, like, really attracted, like, I feel like I wouldn't want the first time I hook up with someone to be like that. they're just, like, going, like, ugh. No, like, if you, like, like their dick and you like fucking them, it's, like, hot. Yeah, I think I'm just gay right now. Yeah, but yeah, you're just in your your lesbian face. I'm leaning. Bisexual. Yeah, you're leaning. <laughs> but yeah, so but yeah. we break down all of the different things that might like different acts or different times that are exhibitionist like. Um, but pretty much most of it starts in childhood. So like some of your early sexual experiences when you were a child are more likely to have you lean a certain way or not. (laughs) There was, like, I was, like, bringing this up to Fiji, but, like, kind of, like, an example of this that is, like, pretty extreme. Like, I fully believe with my whole chest that I am one of these, and Fiji does too. Yeah. And, like, I was, like, I was basically (laughs) in seventh grade, so I was, like, 12. Um, And I was, like, in this math class, and there was, like, this one guy, and we used to, like, flirt or whatever. And, like... I don't know if I was just, like, uncomfortable and, like, didn't want him to do this. But I know that part of me kind of liked it. So it's, like, a little bit, like, of harassment going on for sure. Like, I was very yeah. young. He was the same age as me. He wasn't, like, an older guy. But um, basically we would just, like, sit in the back of the class and he would, like, put his hand, like, on my pussy, like, over my leggings and just, like, you know, move his finger around a little bit. And, like, everyone would be looking and being, like, oh, my God, I can't believe she's letting him do that. But, like, deep down, I'm, like, literally so wet because I was, like, everyone's looking at me. Like, I re- it's, like, a core memory. And, like, I remember I used to have, like, a hole in this one pair of my yoga pants. And then he started. Because he made it or? Just no. Cause- it was okay. just a hole. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he was like he was like if you were a stripper like your name would be easy access like you just have a hole like right there like ready to I'm just like bro in but, seventh grade yeah crazy and I did not tell my friends about this like people did not know unless you were in that math class you did not know like I wasn't telling anyone no yeah that's I mean they were seeing it right that's what I'm saying but so, yeah, I mean, that was literally something. And I've also, like, done some other things. Like, in kindergarten, like, me and my friend used to, like, examine each other's vaginas under a flashlight and, like, see if we're, like, healthy. And, like, I know it's just, like, kid stuff, but, like, she was literally, like, examining my cat. And, like, Wait, would you get, like, turned on? I don't think so because I think we were like six. I don't remember being turned on by it. I remember being giggly about it. Like it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like kind of bad, but you're like. Yeah. Like I remember being like, oh, my gosh. Like, but like the math class thing in seventh grade, like I was definitely turned on by that. No, seventh grade. Like, actually, now that you say that, like seventh grade is really I feel like when it starts to be like you get sexual and stuff because I did start like butt tag on the playground not the playground because in seventh grade we didn't have recess but we would go out for like walks and like you know how the yoga pants were like a big thing Such and I would like thing. I liked wearing yoga pants because I knew I had like a good butt or whatever Same. and I was like oh like let's play butt tag because I wanted like you know to like be run around and chase. yeah so I feel like yeah I was totally definitely, it starts young so like those early sexual experiences are probably going to impact you being an exhibitionist. No, 100%. Because it's like, I don't think that was my choice for him to like start doing that. But I definitely. Yeah, that's kind of like sexual assault. I know. I know. And that's why it's like looking back, I'm not really too sure. But like I do. But it's like, this is like fucked up. But you can still be turned on even if you're being right. assaulted. Like that. Or not turned on. But it's like your body can react even if you yeah. are like. So this is, like, really sad. I don't look back on it and, like, oh, my God, I was assaulted. But I definitely think some, like, weird shit was going on for sure. But, like, I was. class is kind of I was down, though. Like, because, like, these other two dudes would, like, watch him do it to me. Like, bro. And it's, like, it's because this math teacher, like, she was out of her fucking. She was cracked out, bro. So she just, like, I went to public school. Like, it was, like. She didn't pay attention. No. Like, no, it wasn't even a math class. I would, I literally remember her name to this day. Like, she's a huge joke in my school because she's just so stupid. 
But so, yeah, that's how we got away with it. Um, Our desks were close together. Like, I don't know. But yeah, so that's like an early childhood experience, I guess, um, for both of us. And yeah, yeah, it definitely makes sense for like who we are as people. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And both of those things are very like, it's like public, which is another one of the things is like doing having sex, doing sexual acts or anything like that in public places where it's like you could be caught and not just having sex or whatever, but also like masturbating or like anything like that. Right. Um, and I know that was kind of that one I feel like is a lot more common among people like with their partner, like having sex in cars and parking lots. A lot of teenagers do when you're younger and you don't really have anywhere to have sex. Yes. So um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was definitely fucking in the locker room and in the teacher's lounge and all about when I was younger. So I feel like, and then on like all the time, like I still would love like having sex in the bathroom at a bar. If it's like so hot. Yeah. Like so hot. Just like the idea that you could get caught. Yeah. Like the adrenaline of like, Oh, we shouldn't be doing this is like, yeah. No. Yeah. One of the first times I ever sucked dick was like, at a park in the grass like it was really just we were out here like and another one I was thinking of is like some people like another thing that exhibitionists do is like walk around their house naked or just feel very confident naked and like feel empowered by that and I know Fiji has stuff to say about that too but I have this story where I like studied abroad in college and I was like on this abroad campus and I was in I had two roommates and they were both women identifying and they were both queer like it was a great vibe like we were all chill and I started like dating one of the other girls in the program duh and we like (laughs) fell in love so I was getting a little bit more comfortable and like Maybe I would, like, walk around the room, like, in my underwear or something. Because, like, it was my room. But there was this one specific time that I was changing and I was, like, late for class. I didn't want to go to the bathroom to change or whatever. So I just, like, changed in my room, like, everything. I was, like, I had my, like, tits out, I think. And I, like, walked over to get something, like, quickly. Like, I wasn't trying to show anyone my tits. I just, like, was changing. And, like, nothing happened. And then later I got, like, called into the, like, like people that can get you in trouble and they were like yeah like I heard like you made someone uncomfortable because you like took your top off like can you just like go to the bathroom and do that and I was like are you because this was a time where I was like very angry at the world like yeah I still am but back then I was very just like I don't know. I was just mad. I thought that, like, women were just treated horribly, and I just wasn't about to take this shit. I was like, if she's uncomfortable, she can say something to me. Like, why am I in trouble? Like, I got so mad. But it's, like, just those little things. It's, like, some people are so comfortable to walk around naked or have someone see them, and some people are comfortable. It doesn't bother them. And some people, like, they can't even see that. Like, that type of thing, like, makes them uncomfortable. And, of course, you never know what the reason could be. It could be, like, that girl had trauma about something. Like, you never know. But at the end of the day, like, come on. Come on, bro. I know. And that's, like, the thing, too, because I know, like, some people in locker rooms when they play sports are very uncomfortable changing and they'll, like, turn or, like, whatever. And, like, for her, that was, like, a violating experience. So that can almost go under, like, be pinning you as an exhibitionist in the bad way. Right. You know? And it's, like, that's so weird because, like, we talked about with women, it's not really, like, as much of a thing. And it's, like, as a woman, it's, like, oh, it's just my tits. Like, who cares? Like, we're all women. Right. Both me and you definitely have always had more of that, like, idea of just, like, it's like just our body, like, right. just walking around, like, we're free, like, whatever. I've never had a problem, like, changing in a locker room or wa- walking around naked, but, like, it does make other people uncomfortable sometimes, so it's like, oh, like, sometimes I guess you got to check yourself. Right. But. And it's just so weird, because it's like, people were on my side, I would tell them what happened. And they'd be like, she's a queer girl. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, she should, you know, be accepting or whatever. But it's also just, like, maybe she was really going through something. But, like, my tits really, like, triggered her. I don't fucking know, bitch. It's not like I, like, went up in her face. I literally was, like, in my section just, like, 
changing. Like, I, it's just so yeah. stupid. No, I feel that because I've definitely not, no one's ever said anything to me, but I definitely have felt like I've been in rooms with other people where I've like been changing or you're getting ready to go out and people are just like, not people, mostly girls are just kind of uncomfortable that you're, Actually, yeah. I have this I have this one friend, he's gay and me and one of my other girlfriends were like changing to go out and she like took her shirt off and he was like oh my god like stop I don't want to see tits like that scares me like whatever but it's like we were just so comfortable like changing around each other like it's fine right but for certain people it's like weird you know? I know I know because some people it's like I get it if you don't want to be freely naked but for people that get like offended when like you like show yourself like in your literal dorm room, in a locker room, places yeah. where people change, like yeah. that's where I'm just like, damn, like you need to calm the fuck down. Right. It's just a body. Or it's go get a vessel. single. Like don't yeah. live with someone then. No, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I walk around my apartment naked all the time like we were talking about this earlier too like with the whole window thing and like blinds and stuff like I never have curtains I never have blinds I've had like people come over that like we were about to fuck and like they like would shut the blinds and I'd be so like what the fuck because I never shut the fucking blinds like what do you mean I'm just not concerned about people seeing me through the window and if they do I'm like okay whatever I'm right like when I was younger Like, my mom would straight up get mad at me. Like, she would be like, why are you walking around the dining room like that? Like, the windows are open. I'm like, okay, calm down. And I know people in the comments are going to be like, yeah, but what if someone's, like, like a serial killer or they're stalking you? But it's just, like, at the end of the day, like, I feel like the whole thing with, like, feminism, like, intersectional feminism, like, you're just trying to, like, take back shit and, like, take back your body. Like, this is mine. Like, yeah. Honestly, like a creep, like not a creepy guy, but like a guy like walking by my apartment, like seeing my tit for two seconds. It doesn't bother me. Like I don't. Care. Right. And I literally do don't s- care. And if he were to like act on it or do something like whatever, that's his fault. That's, like, that's scary. Weird and that's predatory. Like, yeah. This again, consent. Like this is not an invitation, but I definitely have. I definitely have like masturbated like with the blinds up thinking of the idea that someone's watching me bitch because that is so fucking hot like we literally when we were planning this episode we were like getting horny and it's happening again because are you serious like that shit is and obviously it's like okay you think about horror movies like why do you want that but it's like say it's a normal guy like say it's a normal guy and it's just a fantasy like I love masturbating in my living room on the couch, like, when my roommate's not home, lol, because she's going to listen to this. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, messy with it. Like, I'm like, yeah. whatever. But it's just, like, it's it feels, it hits different than, like, yes. doing it in your bed, like, in a location. Oh like, on the floor sometimes. Like No, I literally did it on the couch the other day, and, like, the way my um, condo is set up, there's, like, the couch right here where I'm sitting, and then in front of me, there's, like, French doors, like windows and I had the door open and my neighbor who I don't know at all was on the balcony and I'm just on the other side so like you can like you can't see but like you could hear right I was quiet obviously but just the idea is just like hot like it's so hot like I love it like do you guys like that like are (laughs) we crazy like I know other people do but I'm so curious to see if you guys are like into this type of shit because some people are like Hell fucking no. Yeah. I don't want someone to see me so naked through yeah. a window. Or not even embarrassed. Like, it's just, like, they're, like, it's, like, respecting your privacy. Like, that's or what they'll say. Or turn them off. Yeah. Like, for us, I feel like it turns us on. Yeah. And like, I don't, like, you're not disrespecting by, like, looking at my body. Like, you can look at it all day yeah. long, bro. I do not care. Like, you, yeah, you're same. not going to get it. You're not going to yeah, get it. Exactly. Exactly. So who cares? Like, to be perceived. But with the whole, like, fantasy thing, too, another one that we talked about is, like, having, like, all the people that either, like, your Ugh. exes or the people that you're fucking with or, like, people you're fantasizing about, like, masturbating to the fantasy of them all in the room watching you i i can't like literally yes like you just i'm like laying in my bed like closing my eyes like 
doing it and like thinking about like people in a room like watching me like not touching me like they're watching watching they're like they're close ish like they're not like the idea of them maybe like fighting over me but like watching like they can't touch me right like we're in a glass box like a a, like a symbolic they can't get in the goddess just like you know like in a cage like ready to be yeah (laughs) that's really how I look at exhibitionism because to me exhibitionism like feels like a very like confident and empowered feeling where it's like you know you're being watched and perceived so it's like you're giving goddess energy like that's just how it feels for me right like Like, people are looking at you praising you like so curious to see like what you're gonna do like they're like waiting for you to come like all that Yes. We are obsessed with the like whole fantasize thing so much. Like we love to think about people watching us. And honestly, that's like one of the biggest signs that you like might have this kink or be into this sort of lifestyle. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in terms of like public sex, like me and Fiji have both done that a lot, like growing up now. <laughs> so we both are trying to like share like one story. But honestly, there's like a lot of them if you guys want to yeah. hear more. Um, but one that comes to mind for me, like with my most like recent guy ex, um, (laughs) we, he was just like dropping me off at my apartment, like casually. I don't live on like a quiet neighborhood. Like I live, like it was like people were around and, um, we were just like kissing goodbye and it just got like really heated. Like, I don't know. And I think I just started like sucking his dick. I've also, roadhead is really hot. We'll go into that after. Yeah, okay. I will go into that after. I just remembered that. That oh, I oh my god, I have such a good one. Okay, okay. But the one I was saying was basically just like we were kissing goodbye. It got heated. We started having sex. He like you know did he like took that shit off. I like hopped on his dick while he was in the driver's <laughs> seat, and like we were, I was just like bouncing on it. Like we were going crazy. And, like, he ended up, like, hitting, like, the, what's it called, bitch? I'm the drunk. alarm? The horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up hitting that. He pressed the gas. So, you know, like, when the car's so in park, it it's like good, that. Ooh. he was just, like. <laughs> it was wild. And, like, we both, like, finished. And, like, I just, like, went into my apartment. Like, it was wild. But the other story I was going to say, I used to give this man Roadhead, like, a lot. Because we both liked it. Rodan and so one hot. time we were on the highway and we were like in kind of traffic and I was like sucking his dick and like I was like on my knees. So it's like my ass was up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, like sideways, like sucking his. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my ass was like at the window and the window was rolled down and I was wearing a skirt. So Not my the thong. On your pussy. <laughs> bro. And he starts finger fucking my pussy. And he in was the like, middle of traffic? yeah, and like he knows that I have that kink of being watched. So like as I'm sucking his dick, he's like, oh, people are laughing at you. People can see you. And I'm like getting so turned on because yeah. I don't even know if it's true or not. But I'm like, oh, my God, they can see me. And like people and he, I would like I asked him after, like, did anyone actually see? He was like, yeah, one guy gave me like the salute. And I was like, <laughs> I'm dead. But that was bold. And I would not do that with anyone. Like, me and that man were together for two and a half years, three yeah. years. Like, I felt very comfortable with him. But that shit was so hot. I haven't thought no. about that in a long time. Oh, my Road God. It was is so-, so hot. Because it's partly the adrenaline of you also, like, when they're driving. It's like, we could die. But also, like, people <laughs> And this is illegal. Us. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just, like, ugh, I love Roadhead. I haven't given any Roadhead in a while. I feel like... Bitch, yeah, I, I have been in the car with you while you were doing it and that other bitch in the back seat in Connecticut. <laughs> Do you know oh, wait, what's who? <laughs> it was those two guys that you guys were, like, friends with. And you were in the front. You don't remember this. No, you have to tell me later who it was. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, bitches love Roadhead. Yeah, we love Roadhead. Mm. It's so hot. And I can't believe people like saw him like fingering my pussy like that. I mean, that's hot. Like, it really if was. If anything, like if there were some voyeurs in traffic, they would be lit as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a story about not roadhead, but having sex in public too. This is also with my ex of like three years. But it was in this, like, shitty bar in Atlanta. Like, just, like, a, like, hole-in-the-wall bar. And it wasn't that busy. It was, like, a fucking Wednesday, Tuesday at, like, 8 o'clock. I don't even know. But we got (laughs) fucked up at this other bar. Went to this bar. We were, like, kissing in the booth. Like, it was really hot. Like, making out. We go to the bathroom together. And, like, obviously the bartenders had seen us, like, hooking up hard as fuck in, like, the booth. So we start fucking in the bathroom. It was so good. It was so hot. But then the bartender came and, like, banged on the fucking door, which I was just, like, thrilled about. Like, we were, like, laughing. Like, whatever. I was, like, (laughs) like, I tried to fight him. Like, whatever. So we go sit down and we had to pay for our tax. Um, and I was like on one like I was like drunk and angry and still horny because I didn't finish like we didn't finish so I wrote like an angry note to him on the napkin like I was like fuck you you're just mad you don't get pussy or something yeah. ridiculous <laughs> like I was like you're a square like something so ridiculous so I like whatever and then I like tapped my ex and I was like ha, look at the note I wrote and my ex thought that the bartender wrote the note to us. <laughs> so then he went up to the bartender and he was like, yo, what the fuck? You said this to my girl. <laughs> oh my so God. It ended up being this whole thing, but it was so, like, it was honestly like a really good night for us because it's so fun. Like, especially cause we live together to like get out of the house and like go have yeah. sex somewhere else. Like, right. It's just, you need to do that, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like, if you have sex in the same bed, you're living together. Like you have, to switch that shit up because it's like if you go like take your girl and like fuck her on the balcony of a hotel it's like you're fucking her brand new like yeah it's like a whole new experience like yeah that's so real um but yeah that's so hot damn this makes me want to go like fuck shit up somewhere i know i'm like i'm in my celibate era right now but i'm just like damn should i be but i'm in my celibate era because i can't remember who the fuck right talking about that i gave roadhead to so yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I've already said this story, but it reminds me of the time where I was, like, sucking dick in the bathroom in Atlanta. And, like, all of those girls were, like, outside. People were, like, outside, like, banging on the door. I was, like, fuck it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> yeah, because they were very much, like, what the fuck is going on? But it's, like, you just don't Yeah, the, like little that. did they know they were just adding to my fantasy by being there. Right. I was, like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for making me, like, ten times more nervous. Um... But, yeah, no, public sex is a, like, either you're with it or you're not, bro. Either you're with (laughs) it or you're not. And, like, I don't need my partner to be with it, but it definitely makes things, like, more interesting down the line if, like, they're willing to kind of, like. No, I need my partner to be with it because I do remember one of my exes, like, a while ago. Like, we had had sex, I think, in cars and places before, but I wanted to fuck him on the beach and he didn't want to. And I remember thinking, like, I don't think I can have, like, a long-term partner that isn't okay with, like, right. having sex. and Because that's something I really like. So, right. it's, like, it is something – it's just one of those things to think about, like, when you're talking about your sexual combat- compatibility with people. Like, if that's something that you really like, maybe you don't want to compromise it, you know? Or right. at least if they've never done it before, at least if they're willing to experiment, you can, like, start slow. I feel like right. I feel like lot is, like... Yeah. Like, I feel like if I had someone that was, like, absolutely not, but someone that's, like, oh, yeah, like, maybe. Like, that's, like, different. Yeah. But also another thing I like to think about is if you're at, like, a social gathering, like, it's not really a party, but it's, like, a gathering and people are, like, chilling on the couch and, like, people have blankets and shit. And you're, like, sitting next to the person and there's, like, a blanket over you and they're, like, fingering you and you have to, like, be quiet and, like, keep a straight face. So hot. I will fall in love with whoever does that to me. Like, I'm obsessed. No, I literally, like, because I told you, I keep, I'm not having sex right now, but I keep making out with people in public and, like, being whatever with that. Because I think I really like, like, that type of PDA, especially when I'm drunk. I think about it the next day and I'm like, damn, did I look messy? Especially because I don't want people to think I'm with this person. But I really just, like, I like it. Like, if we were, like, then we'll leave and I won't fuck them and I won't do anything because the fantasy's over. (laughs) Bro, for real. And then remember that time in Atlanta, we were at that after after party and there was like a stripper pole and you had never been there before. And you looked over and I was giving that guy a lap dance like very intensely. 
Like, yeah. that's another vibe. Like, I was yeah. literally, like, grinding on him. Yes. Like, no one else was in the room. Like, yes. and that was, like, people were watching me, and I'm sure, because I was not down for him. Like, if we were not in that situation where <laughs> people were watching. Him, it's the idea. Yes. It's the idea. Like, it's the fact that, like, everyone's watching me and, like, looking at me like I'm a slut. Like, it turns me on. Bye. And it that, does. That kind of goes into the next one, which yeah. is, like, that type of performance performance and like lap dancing like one of the other signs of being an exhibitionist is that you like the idea of like stripping burlesque maybe only fans like those forms yeah of, like, like performative performative sex, sex porn you know yeah like does that sex. excite you like if you were gonna like yeah like making like sex tapes with your partner because I've yeah. definitely done that and I love yeah. doing that and not, it's important because, like, I was like, oh, are all, like, strippers, porn stars, da, 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 exhibitionists? And not all of them are. Like, some people right. really just do it for the money and, like, are very detached from it and, like, being turned on at all. It, but, and I it's, mean, like, respect. respect. Yeah, it's respect to them. But both of us have experience in the sex work industry. Yeah. And I know for me, it definitely turned me on in certain instances. Like we could have a whole other episode about that trip. Yeah. And we are going to get into it, but yeah, we've both done sex work before and it just kind of like furthered us to believe that we are this because we really check like all of the fucking boxes and I think the idea about, like, stripping and OnlyFans and, like, making porn is it really is, like, a double-edged sword. There's good things and bad things, but the good things are, like, really, really good because it can be really hot to be, like, up on stage and everyone's watching you. Like, you're the star of the show. Like, there's honestly... dances and stuff with all the other people. Like, I remember that for me, like... Like, and again, this is talking about the exhibitionist aspects of stripping. I'm mostly talking about, I never did OnlyFans, I only stripped. But, like, giving people lap dances in that, like, lap dance area where there's other people giving lap dances too and, like, people watching you or people thinking you're hot and wanting to give you money. Like, it turns you on in a way. Bro, remember, (laughs) like, it was, like, our third day. Like, basically, like, Fiji and I, like, stripped together for like some months and then when I moved I like did it on my own like very seriously for like a good amount of time but when we did it together do you remember when we first like we gave a lap dance at the same time to that guy in VIP yes (laughs) yes that was just so crazy but when we were giving like regular lap dances like at that club we worked at and honestly at the club I worked at out here too like they were like you're like very close together you're not like that's not like VIP you're not in a room like you're out in the open and like even some customers can see you doing it too like people in the but yeah I've done OnlyFans too and I I personally like stripping a lot better than OnlyFans well I've never done OnlyFans but that's yeah the only fans was more work there more yeah yeah like only fans was is... more work it was out there more like at least when you're stripping it's like only the people in the club like you know like yeah because i'm more turned on by that in person not just turned on but yeah like, like comfortable with the in person like you have an alter ego you go you wear a wig you have a different name people don't know you you're there you leave only fans is much more you got to promote it you got to consistently create content like right an and that was too much for me it yeah. was too much. Like, it really was. Like, it was just, like, it was – and that didn't turn me on to, like, sex those guys, like, that would yeah. subscribe to me and, like, they would, like, want to talk to me. Like, that didn't turn me on at all. And there was a lot of experience that didn't turn me on at the strip club, obviously, oh, yeah. too. yeah, so many that are, were, in fact, traumatic. Right. So. But when we're talking about this specific exhibitionism – kink and the strip club it was really hot like you were walking around like half naked like people couldn't just do whatever they wanted with you like you had to to like negotiate and go do it so you're just like walking around like you're like a prize like and when you're comfortable walking around naked or being like it was so easy dude like there were some times like because at the club I worked out here there was two stages and after you would finish a set you would go to the other stage some girls like they would already be naked from their first stage set. 
I included, we would just yeah. walk across the floor, go to the next yeah. stage completely naked, didn't yeah. matter. And it's obviously fine. the strip club is like an environment that res- that's normal, like that's expected. Yeah. But it's like how normal it felt for me and how comfortable I was. Yeah. We're not like, we're not people that are like, obsessed with our bodies and like love our bodies like we've gone through a lot with our bodies and like didn't like our bodies at times and still don't but for whatever reason like when I'm naked like that like it's like it's so empowered like yeah I really remember the first time we were in the locker room and just being like because I've been again I've played sports I've been in locker rooms before but it's so much different when you're in a locker room full of like naked women and women in their bras and underwear that are just like chatting like there's no and we're just issue. like you yeah on stage like one girl has her top off it's just like you feel so comfortable and powerful and like whatever right I don't know how to explain it yeah and it's really hot and like honestly like maybe I'll regret saying this but like when when Like, when you're a stripper, like, you really can, like, do what you want to do. Like, there's a lot of things that will make you, a lot of forces that will make you kind of maybe do things that you wouldn't want to do. But if you are in full control and you're in a good headspace, like, literally just do what you want to do. Like, I would tell some customers, like, I just want to play with myself and you can watch. Like, are you down with that? Like, don't touch me, but you can watch. And some would be like, yeah, I'm so down. Let's go. So it's like that. And it was literally hot for me. Like, I loved it. So it's just, like, I don't know. Like, that shit is so fucking hot, bro. Like, ugh. I know. But, yeah. I will miss it. We definitely, I know. Like, it makes me miss it talking about this. Like, seriously, it makes me miss it so much. No, yeah. And if you guys have questions, because I feel like it is really interesting, and there's a lot more girls that are strippers that do OnlyFans today, and everyone has unique experiences, and I still feel like it's so important to talk about all of that. So if you have any questions or you want to share stories, like we really want to hear from you Um, because there's definitely, we wanted to do a stripping episode, but there's so much within it. So yeah. And it's also like some of like, we sometimes feel like we're not ready. Like I'm totally comfortable talking about like the benefits or not the benefits, the positive side to stripping. But the other side is like a lot harder to talk about, but it's so important important to talk about because so many women go into stripping thinking it's like oh I'm gonna make money I'm gonna be free I'm empowered but no they're like there's There's a lot lot that comes with it and you need to know like what you're getting yourself into it's addicting like OnlyFans stripping like sex performance especially if it turns you on so much you feel so empowered by it it can become addicting and that's where the bad stuff comes in but like yeah Overall, that definitely, like, reinforces the fact that, like, we are exhibitionists because we loved that. Like, we loved that. And there was some strippers that didn't like that. And they just, like, felt like they had to be there for money or you don't know their story. But, like, if that idea just, like, excites you, if you think that, like, oh, it would be fun to make a video, like, of me, like, doing something else, it would be fun for you know, me to have all the attention and on me in a very sexual way, like it's a good sign that you might be an exhibitionist like yes. us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then so next ones is kind of similar as like putting on a show for your partner. I feel like I don't know if I've like done like I don't think I've ever done like a strip tease, anything like I'm more like in the environment of the strip club or for like hookups or people I don't know, but I don't know. I've done it before. Okay. And I like doing it, but it's also, it's a lot scarier like doing it one-on-one for the person that you like love versus doing it for strangers. Like the stranger thing turns me on more. So much. Because you're more disconnected. You're not going to talk to them ever again. It doesn't matter. But, like, putting it on a show for your partner, like, that makes me so nervous. But it yeah. is really hot. But no, I think yeah. I basically just done, like, a strip tease, like, a lap dance. Like, I, like, would dance a little bit for him and, like, yeah. kind of just, I don't even know. But it wouldn't even last that long. Like, we would just start fucking, like, immediately. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's just, like, different for me. But it does turn me on. Like, I do like it. Yeah, I feel like I would like it in the right instance. I just don't know if that I've ever tried it. So Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it, you know, you've never yeah, tried Yeah, you it. never know yeah. until you try it. But I definitely would. 
Um, and then we kind of talked about dressing sexy in order to pull attention. Like that's kind of, you know, showing off your body, reclaiming your sexuality in that way. It's, it's kind of like a two sided thing where it's not always, you're not giving consent just in the way that you're dressing. Right. Like I know, like I, especially with partners, like one thing I really look for in a partner is because I like to dress sexy. I like to show my nipples. Sometimes I like to show under boob, like show my stomach, like whatever. I definitely want a partner that like thinks I look sexy and is like, is turned on by the fact that I'm getting attention from other people. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know, like I don't, I've had partners before that like want me to cover up or whatever. And that like turns me off. Yeah. So I definitely want like a partner that is like comfortable with, and is turned on by it too, you know? Right. It's like interesting. Like for me, like I feel like I like dressing like, sexual and revealing because I do it's not sometimes it's not even like we want that attention we just want to show that like we're comfortable with this like yeah, we're, we're sure of ourselves it. like I know that like this is how I like to dress like I feel no shame about it yeah and like sometimes it is kind of but okay so here's the thing like I I've been in relationships that get toxic but I've never been yeah. in like an actual toxic relationship where someone was controlling me so when yeah. you said, like, you don't – it turns you off when someone tells you to cover up for me, like, I kind of think that's hot because, like, yeah. it's a different kink, but it's, like, a control kink. But I've never had yeah. someone fuck me up where I'm, like, well, I no, can't. And I feel you, though, because, like, sometimes it can be hot. Like, even with my ex that was, like, toxic and abusive and wanted me to cover up, like, sometimes I would think it was hot that he'd be, like, oh, no, like, that's mine. Like, not in right. – Like, because it gets – Because it's, like, if you do yeah. it in a sexy way, it's, like, oh, he's, like, no, that's just for me. Like, whatever. But, like, okay, sometimes. But, like, if I, wa- if I want to dress how I want to yeah. dress and you're telling me, no, I can't, that's, that's different. different. It's yeah. different if it's like a one night, you know what I'm saying? Like he's helping you pick out your outfit and he's like, no, for tonight, like I just want to, you know? Yeah. And it, it can't be one sided. Like it's like if he just wanted me to cover up, but I didn't think that was hot, like that's yeah. different. But if it was like a thing that we had where it was like, no, you can't wear that, that's mine. But it's more of like a joke. Like it's not real. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say too, it's like at the same time, like, I, I don't want anyone to hold me back, like, ever. Like, I, cause yeah. I feel like I haven't had people that hold me back, but when I'm in a relationship, I hold myself back. Like, I will yes. not dress like that. I won't act like my normal, Full like, charisma- <laughs> charismatic. <laughs> What's charismatic. the word? <laughs> charismatic. Charismatic. <coughs> oh. Because I'm, like, out of respect for that person. But hearing you say that, it's like, yeah, like, I want someone to just be so sure that I'm theirs and, like, be like, yeah, like, my girl's hot. Look, everyone's flirting with her. Like, but yeah. they're not going to get anything. Because I get mine. turned on by that. Like, I've definitely. I'll be like, yeah, I'll be like, hey, like, look at me with this person. Right. Like, I get turned on by one me. But I also get kind of turned on by my partner looking sexy and other people wanting them. As long as they know. <laughs> like, okay, like this bitch might look at you, but then you come to me and you can like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you don't, keep it in check. don't take it too far, though. But that's what I would do for you. Like, I, I want us to be able to pop out looking hot as fuck. And, you know, other dudes are looking at me, but like your arms around me or like I'm going to be right. you in the corner or whatever. So it's like it should be a balance. And it even, like, turns me on, like, not, like, you turn me on, but, like, when we go out, if it's, like, yeah. us two or, like, even, like, your other friends, too, and we're all dressed, like, baddies in that way, I'm, yeah. like, damn, like, we just are, True. like, this shit right now. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, because it's, like, moving confidence, move together, like. I know. Like, oh, I love it. This makes me want to go. It. I w- it makes me want to go out, bitch. I wish you were here. Same, I want to just, like, go girl. out tonight. You have no idea. Like, I need it so bad. Next one. The last one is, and we'll recap these, too. Um, the last one is you love bringing your partner with you to shop for lingerie or sex toys or stuff like that. Like, pretty much kind of what we're talking about. But, like, you want to go with your partner to help them find ways for you to look sexy. Yeah. Or do sexy things. Yeah, like, my boyfriend at the time used to take me to, like, the strip club stores so I could, like, he could, like, buy me outfits and, like, toys and shit. 
Yeah. And the toys weren't for the strip club, obviously. That was just for, like, us. But that was definitely hot. But I remember when he, like, bought me my first toy, I was like, oh, my God, he actually cares about me getting off. Like, how cool. Like, (laughs) because he knows I, like, need a vibration. (laughs) My ex, like, I remember we were – I was in Connecticut with my family, and he was – he was in Oh, Atlanta. yeah. He's such a loser. Bro. Yeah. No, it's crazy, though, because we had FaceTime sex. And, like, I made it sexy because I wanted to get a vibrator and do sex and use sex toys, but he wasn't really. So I made it sexy. Like, I made it part of our, like, yeah, how we were, which I feel like is a good way to do it. Like, if you want to introduce something new, like, do it in the moment, kind of, like, while still asking for consent, but whatever. So I was like, I should get a vibrator and you should use it on me. So, like, we ordered one together while I was in Connecticut. Like, he helped me pick it out or whatever but then he didn't want to use it like he tried to use it once and he was like no like because he's so damn insecure like if your partner doesn't want to like have fun with toys like even I feel like it's like when I think about toys I would always think because like I grew up gay essentially and so I was always thinking like oh like lesbians like they use strap-ons they use this they use that so I was like I'm gonna be using that um (laughs) which like obviously not all lesbians do but then like you could like it's like straight people should use that shit too especially because it's like if clit stimulation yeah bro like come on like sometimes like fingers like it's cool and like you have long nails sometimes like you can't really like reach Right, without no, like, like I the fuck out of their dick and like whatever. It's like you exact, need like a vibrator, dude. That would piss me off so much. Like sometimes yeah. I'd be like, "Can you fuck me in a way that I can actually touch myself?" <laughs> yes, because he'd be like, it's, "It's usually easiest for me to like rub your clit like when you're like on your stomach, kind of, and you have like for me it's like one leg up." Like, yeah, one. Yeah. Minute, and they're from the back kind of like because you're like lifted a little because you're lifted a little and you can reach. But like in missionary type, like <laughs> I could never like I don't have nails right now, but usually I have like stiletto pointy nails. And it's just like I'm too afraid I'm a poke your dick. Right. With my nails while I'm trying to do this. It's just not going to work. So it's I like know. you need a rubber fucking vibrator yeah or no, dick my, ring you know they have those vibrating dick rings like that's what he got too he was yeah. into it like he was cool that was the good thing about him he did not get insecure when it came to toys like good he would wear that the cock ring with the vibrator attached to I it the word cock it just turns me off if i'm really like sexting with a guy what do you like, like dick cock. better i'm like yeah dick yeah dick i think it's cock is kind of hot not the way I say it. I'm sorry. I'm giving her the ick. Um, yeah, cock is turning me off. Dick is hot. Though. But yeah, and it's also like when I would go to those stores and like we would pick out my outfits. Like it was all about me and like yeah. my sex shit. So it was just yeah. like, this is great. Like I loved it. All the attention on you. Because it's really about being perceived attention and attention well to recap kind of everything we talked about guys exhibitionism is a kink it encompasses a bunch of different kinks you might be an exhibitionist if you have an early childhood memory involving being perceived as sexual (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, or having sex in public or something like that um you fantasize about being watched you walk around your house naked you like having sex in public you enjoy putting on a show for your partner. You like the idea of getting into burlesque, stripping, OnlyFans, or other forms of sexy culture like porn. Um, you, uh, did I already say you dress sexy to pull attention? I'm drunk. And you <laughs> like bringing your partner with you while shopping for lingerie. Yeah. But overall, it's like the biggest one, too, is like just fantasizing about being watched and being really comfortable in your sexuality and you want people to look at you like you like that sort of attention not all the time because nobody likes that all the time like we all go through shit but it's like at the end of the day I would definitely say I'm an exhibitionist a hundred percent and and we learned this from through doing this episode like we always research like, we knew that uh, this shit about ourselves, but I honestly didn't know there was a word for it. And maybe you guys are going to be like, you guys are so dumb, like, we knew about this. Because, like, I, it's weird that, like, we knew about voyeurism and not yeah. this. Like, why is Which, that one more common? Because I feel like, I no, honestly, based on the statistics, like, more, there's generally more men who are exhibitionists. But I also 
feel like men are generally more comfortable talking about their sexuality and sex, whereas women can right. kind of like, it's, there's not as many conversations, but I feel like when you think voyeur, you usually think man, like you usually think a man and his wife and he likes to watch his wife get fucked. That's usually what I think of. Right. You know? So I feel like voyeur, it's just like, it comes up more. I've, I've been sexting guys before where they're into the voyeur shit. Um, so you know that term, but exhibitionists didn't know. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know. So before we wrap up, we did do some polls on our story about this topic and asked you guys some questions. So I'm just going to read through those quickly. Pretty interesting. Um, we asked you guys if it turns you on to masturbate in front of your partner and a hundred percent of you said yes. Not one person said no. Um, this one was like the biggest, like half and half one. So it was, do you fantasize about being watched? And 56% said yes. And 44% said no. So that one's very like either you do or you don't feels like. And this one shocked me, but we asked you guys, does the idea of sex performance scare you or excite you? And 92 motherfucking percent of y'all said that it excites you. So are we, is our people following us like all strippers and audience, sex maybe. work creators? Because yeah. I love that. Um, and then 8% said, no, thank you. Not for me. Um, and then the last one was, do you like walking around your house naked and 81% yes. And then 19 cent per said no. Did I say that weird? 19% <laughs> said no. Um, so thank you guys. If you answered our polls, we're definitely going to be doing more of that in the future. And we really want you guys to send stuff in, um, any stories, comments, or questions you want to share. And we did get a couple of those. We're not going to read all of them, but we just yeah. chose three that Our we favorites. liked. <laughs> yeah. So Fiji, do you want to <laughs> want to read those? Yeah. So the first one is a little story. Yeah. He said, I fucked my girlfriend in front of my friend's house in the street. And then a month later, fucked that same friend on the street. Bro, just because I know who wrote this, I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? That, that's a lot. And I, but I get how it would turn me on too, honestly, especially if at the time you fucked your girlfriend in front of that friend's house, you were fantasizing about the other person because then yeah. it's like a love triangle coming full triangle. Yeah. And it's like you are really fucking who you wanted now, like. Yeah, yeah. And on the same street in the same place. Maybe that's your spot. I don't know. Yeah, that's hot. No, it, is. <laughs> it is pretty hot. I would do it. Um, yeah. Shout out to you. Keep keep the exhibitionism up. Yeah. Um, you want to read the next one? Yeah, and then someone shared that they used to be a cam girl and they enjoy other people watching them get off. And they found out through being a cam girl. Cam girl. They, yeah. Through that found out that they enjoy, you know, people watching them and watching them. And that's like what I was saying when I would say to the strip club customers, like, do you want to just watch me do this in VIP? And yeah. that's it. Like, because I love that. Like, it's yeah. so good. And that's like, you know how they say, like, find a way to get <laughs> to get paid for doing what you love. Like, yeah. <laughs> feel me if you already if it's one of your kinks to be watched why not dude this is literally making me want to go back (laughs) this is not good okay but there are other negative reasons i know stopped why we stopped so but like even doing the only fans it was hot to me because like sometimes people would request like certain types of videos so i would like do like it would cost more but i would like make a video specifically for them and it would turn me on to think about them like watching me like doing that like i don't know it's interesting it is interesting but shout out to her i hope she's making a ton of money i know seriously i hope you are making so much money um and yeah the last one was just a question yeah the question is have you ever had sex in a public place like in the open and we kind of answered this in the episode we said you know you in the car uh roadhead me in the bathroom yeah you you want to draw one more just locker rooms yeah yeah there's room yeah i know what's like another good one um yeah, I feel like the bathroom is, like, the biggest one, but it's not like you're in 
it's different when it's like you're just it, it's like a bathroom where people are like waiting to go yeah so you have to like You're holding up the line. yeah like it's more like that like public bathroom type which is like so gross low-key but yeah We've but when you're like turned on with... you don't yeah. care yeah. yeah I've had sex with other people in the room like yeah yeah me too, too. I'm trying to think other public places definitely like outside in a park I right. would love to do an airplane. That's one I'd really love to Me do. Me too. Uh, me too. I did a train, though. I did a train. I did a train, too. I did a like train, too. Like, in the train, not a train. Though. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah, the train one was hot. That was when I was dating the abroad girl. We were, okay. like, on a train to, like, a different fucking country. And we, like, yeah. went to the bathroom. Even and it was water. so hot. She was, like... Because the bathroom, like, the bathroom on this train was, like, different. Like, we were in Europe. Like, it was bougie. And so there was, like, this, like, changing table, I think, that was big. And she, like, was, like, up there. And I was, like, eating her pussy. Yeah, it was hot. Hot? Yeah. Oh, you know, one other hot one, too. I did fuck one of my exes on the kitchen counter of my parents' house. Oh! And, like, there's a lot. You've been to my parents' house. You know, yeah, bro. Windows, and they weren't home, but, like... If they were to pull in the driveway, like, you can see straight through those windows. So that was definitely very... Yeah. That's- it would have been traumatic, probably, if they walked in, but... Yeah, I also I also had sex on my rooftop in one of my apartments I lived in in L.A. But it, it wasn't, like... Oh, yeah. Okay, so not my rooftop. I did that. But on this other rooftop of my ex's... He lived in, like, a building with, like, a lot of people. So, like, we were on the rooftop, and I was sucking his dick, and people were walking by. I remember that. Yeah, that was hot, too. Fuck. The public thing is so good. And he was, like, so into it. Like, I was. So we were kind of extra about it. Like, we'd be like, oh, my God, should we? Should we? (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, yes. The answer is always yes. I know. Which is, like, I kind of do want a partner to, like, calm me down a little bit. Like, I don't need to be doing it that much. I feel like, yeah. You need, like, a partner. Well... But sometimes yeah. it's, like, fun. I don't know. Like, that's because that's why our sex was so good because we were just turned on by a lot of the same things. When you bounce off of each other, the energy is just, like, you both like the same shit, so. Yeah. Because it's, like, maybe I wanted to do that, but I was too scared to say it. And then you meet someone that's, like, also just as into it. And you're, like, oh, shit. Like, maybe I'm not alone in this world. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we like the same shit. Yeah, but yeah, that's so really hot. it. We 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 got some other comments and stuff, but we don't want to like dwell on it too much, you know. But yeah. you guys should definitely submit and email us. That's the best way. Um, so wet so dry at gmail.com. The O's are zeros. And make sure you guys are following us in general. We are trying so hard to get content out a lot. I've been weekly. Yeah, like actively posting on TikTok and everything. So follow us on TikTok and Instagram, So Wet, So Dry. Um, Wherever you're listening, we, you know, we have episodes out on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube, which is the video version. So if you guys are interested in, like, seeing us, because I know it's like I, I kind of picture like everyone's watching us, but some people are just listening. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in seeing too, here we are. Catch us on YouTube. Um, but yeah, this was a fun episode. We did good. <laughs> we did good. One thing like I love is like a quiet man. Like I love a quiet man. Like if you just sit there or stand there and like look sexy and like give me eyes. Like, you're not fucking saying anything. Like, let me talk. Like, let me talk and move around and do whatever, but you just look at me. Like, that turns me on yes. so much. Because you're building up shit where it's like, I want you. Right. You know? Or, like, just say one thing. Like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs>